Dr. Tsako Sipati here, uh, Chief Executive of Southern African Women in Leadership. What a pleasure and an honor it is to have you here as one of the finalists for the inaugural Sawo Trailblazers Awards. How do you feel? Uh, I'm sure, uh, I feel very good. Uh, uh, to me, it is an honor uh, to be part of this team and I'm looking forward. Thank you. Really, I'm excited on your behalf. And like I said, I'm honored. So this is Dr. Andy Braff. He is my co-pilot. He'll be asking you a question or two about your journey and what earned you a seat at this table. But before I hand you over to him, can you tell us and the viewers who Buyiwa is and what is she all about? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pat. And uh, also thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Vuniwe is uh, a leader. Uh, I believe that I'm a trailblazer uh, because I, I've been in leadership for quite a long time now, uh, for more than 15 years. Uh, and I've noticed changes that have made uh, in the lives of the community and in the lives of others uh, along my journey. So Vuniwe is a passionate person who's an optimistic leader. Uh, I believe in certain qualities of leadership in managing by objective in being a situational leader. Uh, I like the last part of being a situational leader because in our environments uh, that we survive in, there are a lot of changes every day. Then you cannot expect the environment to change so that it suits you. Rather, you change so that you suit the environment. So I'm that kind of a person in any environment that I work in. I ensure that I adapt and adopt. Thank you. That's incredibly amazing, Hans. You are truly a trailblazer, and I agree with you on that. Dr. Andy Braff, over to you. Thank you so much, Sapati. Well, you, you describe yourself as a public sector professional, and you seem to have done a lot of specialized work in local government. What advice can you give us in terms of how we get local government right, and particularly how we get more women involved in local government leadership? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my observation uh, uh, as a woman leader uh, is that I still believe that there's less recognition when it comes to women, not only within local government sphere. I know that all the industries organizations are looking forward in ensuring that in their leadership position, they do appoint women. But what I've been observing through my research is that women, yes, they are appointed to add numbers, but the environment is not made suitable for those women to operate successfully. So you'll find cases whereby women are appointed in few months to come or a year to come, they resign in those positions. So I believe that there's still a lot to be done by our government generally and the municipalities to be specific to ensure that when they push for women to be in leadership positions, those women are being coached, they are being mentored, they are being supported so that they are able to survive in those environments. Because some of us, we, we are being put in very hostile environments and we are led there to swim on our own. So it's important that you get the full support as a woman so that uh, we are able to enjoy the journey and impact positively in the community and the people that we are serving. Thank you. Buyua, how do you go about coaching in the public sector? Uh, where do you provide that kind of service and what benefits have you seen in offering your services as a coach within local government? Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, I'll cite two examples. Uh, in about five years ago, five to six years ago, uh, I developed a, a project called Insega Yembu Melelo Coaching and Mentoring Initiative. Uh, that time I was the general manager for corporate services and it was targeting all women that are in supervisory position. Uh, the intention was to ensure that they are well capacitated for them to be ready for senior managerial positions. And that project was a success. It, it took about two to three years until I left the institution for a better position. And then I left those women being in better positions, not only in terms of work, but also in terms of their studies. There are women that I can safely say, that I'm proud that today they're doing their PhD, they've passed their master's, where I took them from nothing in terms of their qualifications. So I'm really proud of that. Secondly, in 2016, 2017, uh, we put together an initiative uh, which was called Umtombo Research Institute. 
uh, I'm so passionate about research. I like research so much. Uh, we registered an NGO. The main intention was to ensure that we coach and mentor anyone because we're looking at issues of diversity. Anyone, uh, either you are doing honors, you are doing masters, you are doing PhD, or you are doing research as a professional, so that those people can be able to move up and finish their studies. The program started in 2016-17, and it is still continuing. And uh, uh, to be frank, now it has already gained the national footprint. We are having coaching and mentoring sessions on a monthly basis. We do have support from different process professors and doctors academic wise from different universities who come and assist us in terms of coaching and mentoring for everyone that does need our support. Recently, I think it was last week or two weeks before, uh, I spoke uh, in the radio station, which is called UCOS FM, on the same initiative. And I was so surprised after, uh, after the session, a lot of students and kids that need support in research. I believe that that is an area that is ignored uh, and where uh, people don't have an interest because what raised our interest, uh, basically my interest, because I initiated the process, was the fact that South Africa is have got challenges of poverty, challenges of inequality. And for us to be able to deal with those challenges, we need educated people. Thank you very much. Viewer, I note that you've also been involved in a board of an organization called KNA Global, an international NGO. Uh, what would you say to women who need to find a seat at the board table? How do we open the way for more women to be represented at board level in Southern Africa? My first advice uh, to women who want to be part of the of the boards, because even myself, when I started, I took it for granted that, okay, I'm educated, uh, therefore I can be a board member. It doesn't work like that. You have to be trained first. You need to get a proper and formal training on how to become a board member. You have to understand issues of governance, issues of financial management, so that you are able to take right and correct decision when we are a board member. We have seen in our days on the news, on papers, on how board members and even board chairpersons are held accountable for certain decisions. So it is my advice. There is IOD who does, prof who does provide training or, or, or on how to become a board member. There's also directors association who trained me as well to be the board member. Hence I'm saying I only realized after I was part of KNG Global that I really need training. So I underwent that training. I got more appointments as a board member. Currently, I just received another appointment as a board member for Directors Association. Dr. Vuyua Tsako, on behalf of the Sawil Trailblazers, we'd like to congratulate you and wish you every success. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me as well.